Hello, in today's presentation, I'm going to walk you through creating an order in Folio. Once you come into the Orders app, the first thing you're going to want to do is select the Orders tab underneath Search and Filter. This will populate a filtering system where you can search for any existing orders that you've created or have the option to create a new order. You'll see a button in the right hand corner that's blue. That will be your new button. If you click on that, that's going to open your create purchase order form. Now for those of you that have created a template, if it's something that you order from on a routine basis, from a local vendor or Amazon or another book jobber, um, you can use that template drop down menu and in this case we're going to do an Amazon book order. What that will do is when you create a template it will pre-populate certain fields so anytime I order from Amazon I know that my vendor will be Amazon.com it's generally a one-time order and I can add in any additional information. So what we're going to do first is um, talk a little bit about what you see on this form. The first is going to be this PO number. The PO number is generated in the system, so I am currently on 10,006, and it will go up by each numeric number. So the next time I create an order number, it will be 10,007. In your settings, you can have the option to edit that number manually, otherwise the system will automatically create those PO numbers for you. Um, there are options to add a prefix or a suffix. Now this would be the case where you may be ordering it for a specific department or maybe you need to do a rush order on something um, if a professor or faculty member has asked you something. Now if we weren't using that template, you'll notice here you do have an organization lookup and what that will allow you to do is it will populate all of your vendors that you have in your organizations module where you can either search or filter on the left hand side or scroll through and select the vendor that you're looking for. Now as I scroll down a little bit further, you, you'll notice here you do have additional information that you can fill out. If you are a multi-system location and you order for another library in your system, you do have build to and ship to options. Again, if you're a multi-branch um, campus system, you can fill that out. Now for now, this is about the only thing we have to fill out on this particular screen. You'll notice anything that is essentially has a red asterisk next to it. Those are the particular fields that are mandatory. Once I'm done, um, I'm going to hit that save and close and that has now created our purchase order number. You'll see right at the bottom it gives us a little pop-up that tells us it was successfully saved. Now that we've created the purchase order, the next thing we're going to do is add the PO lines. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you're going to see a button that says add PO line. Once I click on that, that will populate a new screen for me. You can see that the template is already selected and now we get into our item detail information. So a couple ways that you can do this. You can manually type in the title or you can do a title lookup. Um, so what that will allow me to do is this will take me into my inventory module where I can search for an existing item. Um, so if you are, let's say, adding additional items to a particular title, or if you've already brought the records in from an outside source, um, you can select the record from the inventory module. So I'm going to search for a title here, pandemic tracking uh, information. And so in this case, let's say I'm ordering some additional copies for this title uh, because several of the classes are using it for research purposes. So I'm going to select that and then that automatically fills in several of the fields. So anything that I had in that particular record will automatically 
add that information into the form. So you can see like the contributor, product IDs uh, for my ISBN numbers, um, and any additional information has been added directly to this record. Now, if this was a subscription that you were starting, uh, you'll notice here that we do have subscription from and to dates. As I scroll down a little bit, um, you do have the opportunity to add any additional product ID information, a receiving note, or an internal note. So um, let's say when these items came in, maybe I wanted to get these to the circulation desk as soon as possible to get those processed. I could put a note in here that says, you know, please send to tech, um, technical um, services for immediate processing. So you have a lot of options that you can take um, notes at both levels. Now as we scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see a little more information. So now we see the details. Um, under acquisition method, it defaulted to purchase at vendor system. So in most cases, I've gone out to Amazon, I have ordered the books or DVDs or items from Amazon, and now I'm coming into Folio to update my order information. There is a drop-down menu where you can select other options. So for example, if, if this wasn't an Amazon purchase, maybe this was a gift or a donation. Um, you could still process it in here and you'll notice that you do have options in here to select. Um, as I scroll a little bit further, we're going to look at another one of those red asterisks, and you can see that it's asking me, is this a physical resource, an electronic, is it a hybrid or a mix, um, or other. And as we keep going down, um, I can fill in any additional information that I have. So payment status, pending, uh, payment not required, receipt status, um, pending or not required. Again, this is just as much information as you needed to select. You can add that in. Um, if this was a rushed order, again, you could select that information um, and then any other details you need to add in. Now, the last thing we're going to see down here is our cost details. Now, I can come in and enter that information. So, let's say it was $45. If you're ordering more than one copy, um, you can uh, of course select that and I want you to watch the estimated price as I increase that quantity under the physical option. So now as I go up to two, you'll notice that estimated cost goes up. So you can set whatever quantity you're adding for that particular item. Any type of additional costs, again if this was a different um, bookseller besides Amazon, you might have processing fees or um, any other fees that may be associated with, um, you know, adding on any type of spine labels or tattle tape, barcodes, any information that gets added before the book is actually shipped. And then again, of course, you know, any type of discount um, that you may have associated with the purchase. Next, you're going to see that fund distribution. If I click on that button, this will populate the option where I can actually come in and select what I'm purchasing this um, particular title for. So as I scroll through, I can select um, my fund you know, that we're attributing this to. So I'm going to select uh, university allocation. Now, I have two ways to do this. I could set the value by a percentage or by dollars. So if I'm paying that full $135 um, to that particular fund, I can do it. Now you also have the really nice option um, to say that you're going to split funds. So let's say I was only paying $100 to that university allocation. I could come down below and select um, the other one. So if I was using this for, let's say, maybe a grant, I can come in here and attribute that to $35. And that would allow me to split that between two different funds. So it's an easy way to identify maybe two different departments that are splitting it, or if some is going towards a grant and some is going towards um, a different fund that you have, it's an easy way to split that information up. Now, you'll notice here that um, in the location we have main selected. If you were going to put that in a different location, um, maybe on 
reserve or in the annex or a popular reading room, wherever it may be for your location specific to your folio instance, um, you could select that. In my case, I'm going to keep mine in the main library. And for physical quantity, three. That allows me to identify those three copies um, that I have purchased up atop. Now, if I was adding those to um, a different location, so maybe I was going to put just two in the main library and then add another location in the annex and add that one in, you'll notice it does allow me to do that so I can identify those different locations. The last thing we'll see down here is the physical resource details. So again, I can select you know, receipt date or expected receipt date, but the other one I do want to draw your attention to is creating the inventory. You'll notice there is a red asterisk. In this case, I'm going to leave mine selected at instance holding an item. Now I did connect it to an existing instance record in my system, so what it'll do is it will create a new holding an item record for this for the annex um, in the system. And then of course my material type. The last thing you'll see down here is vendor information. Again, if you have a specific vendor reference number for an outside platform, you could enter that information here. And then of course a free text form for any instructions to the vendor. Once I'm done, I'm going to select that save and close. This will now give me a pop-up letting me know that the purchase order line was successfully created. The last thing I want to do now to say that I am ready to receive this item is I'm going to come over to Actions and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to select Open. Once I select that Submit, this will now tell the system that this purchase is order. I'll get the pop-up down below letting me know that this is open and now I can begin that receiving process.